Welcome to episode four. Well, I had a discussion with my buddy Dwayne thinking about the best way to get this out of here, this engine. He suggests splitting the motor and trans and I'm thinking take it out all at once. So I guess we'll see who's right. Anyway, we'll start under here. This is the part cable, being a cable shifter transmission or early. Sure, some residual fuel come out of here, or a fuel, I mean, training fuel. Yes, I would. There's some left. We'll get the, uh, where's the drain pan? There's one over here. Always oh, making a mess. Didn't think there'd be too much. The pan is, or the, the tranny is empty. Otherwise. What's that do? Uh, a little clip came off. This is the, the parking brake cable for the transmission on these early trannies. Oh. Um, they have a shift cable and then they got a separate park brake cable. Anyway, I got to take that off. So we can get the tran transmission out, and then I'll get the uh, speedo cable here. Be hidden again. Love this uh, lift. Ideal for old people. Us. You're three years old. Maybe older. maybe you more than me. <laughs> Um, I need a light. Oh, that little flashlight went. Oh, yay. Speedo cable out. It was, uh, didn't want to leave the housing. Almost like it'd been in there for 60 years. That's good. That thing won't come off. It's got a clip. So, okay. Let's hit that aside. And that's as that. Now we're going to take this uh, transmission cross member out. My buddy Dwayne again thought maybe that it was. All right, I got a big impact right here. Thought maybe there's four bolts to take out the center section because we got the, the torsion bars right here as well. But yeah, so there's. You can just take out the center section and get the transmission out, which, you know, kind of makes sense. No, I'm just looking for a socket. And let's see if these nuts on the back are welded or not. Yeah, they need a wrench on them. Is that okay? You gotta love electric impacts. Makes life so much easier and, fa and faster. <laughs> Guess we gotta fish out some parts out of there before we dump it. We've got a solution for that too. Um, what are you cutting? I'm gonna cut the exhaust, I guess. It's kind of in my way for this bolt, but it's got to come out anyway. Because if you look at it with the camera there, it's it's pretty hokey. With all these welds and stuff, and this should be tucked into here. So we'll be re redoing all that. And I'll just put a fresh blade in this. 
and get some uh, earmuffs. side I cut the double the double pipe side instead of the single so that was kind of dumb and uh, whatever <laughs> um, okay this really pinched the blades that's, that's a good pressure on it huh stupid lights Of course, the uh, torsion bar is in a way a little bit. Where was I cutting? You gotta be careful you don't nick the torsion bar. You don't wanna put a stress ri riser in it. This is really fighting me here. There we go. Okay. Uh, I guess we might as well do this side too. So I kept the bend part right off the manifold in the flange because I might have to reuse those because uh, I'm probably just going to buy a uh, exhaust pipe kit with all the angles and bends and stuff and make it up myself. But sometimes uh, those are hard to match up. So. I'll cut that one. Hmm. Got to cut where I can get the blade in. Crappy blade's already done. That was a brand new blade. Just garbage. I usually buy the Milwaukee blades and they're the best. And I thought I'd save a few bucks in these other ones that look good, but no. I got an old Milwaukee blade. That's done like a dozen cuts. Still cuts better than this, and this has been one cut. Okay, exhaust out of the way. Tranny mount bolt. And then we got this cross member here. And I'm thinking I should put something to hold the tranny tail shaft up because if one mount's undone and there's this one and if I undo this I think the whole thing's going to want to twist and you know kind of probably fall out from the bottom but at least it'd be out right okay so
I think we should go through here first. I don't know, maybe a piece of wood would be better or something. You need a piece of wood? No, we'll just, we'll try this. I'll try it the hard way first, right? Um, you do you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cut that out. No, we're not. <laughs> okay, we'll put it up here and get it out of my way. That'll hold it anyway. If it wants to fall on my head, at least this cheap little nylon strap will save my life. And if not, well, you're going to have a garage sale. Because she's told me that's what's going to happen. <laughs> the minute you go, things are flying for sale. And those bars are strong enough to hold the weight of that. I guess it wouldn't be moving too much. Eh? You hold the car up. Whole front of your car. That's your spring. That's basically your coil spring. Oh, okay. But it twists longitudinally. Okay. Okay. So we got that. That now we can try this, and we'll see if uh, that's gonna save my life. <clears throat> Antique wrench. Oh shoot! I can suck at this. Sharp exhaust pipe cut in my hand. Okay, that's three of the four. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done the other one last because, you know, it's going to fall on my head. But... Yeah, she's she's coming. Um, yeah, well, let's give it a little persuasion here. Thank God. So there's two bolts on this cross member. One you can see right here, and this one's missing. Uh, you know, they forgot to put it in or decided not to. So we'll get that out of there. And then we can let this fall on my head. It's probably not good to have my hands in there either. As I could see this pinching my my hand, but I think uh, stick this in here for now. Oh, it's very an idea. Uh, I keep it from uh, squishing my hand, I think. Looks like this seal hasn't been leaking, so we'll probably don't have to reseal that. It's all dry. Probably just do a Check it out again, but I think it's. I think we'll try and just uh, put a, a new filter and gasket in there, and then adjust the bands, and then try that out. I don't want to rebuild the tranny if we don't have to. Like I said, it looks like it's been done at some point, and who knows how many miles since then. Quite likely, it's good. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I think this is, uh, yeah, see, now it's going to be stuck in there, kind of. Isn't that weird, eh? There's a spring in there for the mount. These older cars, look at this. So there's a spring here, and it goes to the cross member and uh, with the cushion. That's weird. I had no idea. Okay, so 
this is out. And the strap is holding, so it's a good thing we did that because that whole thing would have pivoted on this one motor mount. And, uh, you know, it could come right down and just get jammed in there. Anyway, that's good. Look at that. Hey, strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, we'll get the starter out, I guess. Well, we could have just done the... Oh, yeah, I got to get the starter out to do this mount over here. Because, uh... Okay, it's starter time. Usually they're so hard to get it, but this is not so bad. Cars with manifolds are way easier. You got headers and they encapsulate the starter and it's just a nightmare. Now well, this one still has all the wires hooked up. Top. This would be the harder one. There's a hole in the floor. You could probably just <laughs> go right through there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Oh. This is a not a deal, I'll tell you that. It's one thing to get the wrench on there, and then you gotta have a enough leverage and swing to loosen the bolt. I think we'll lower that car down one notch. Uh, now, which way am I going here? Oh, look at that. It wasn't even that tight. Pretty stiff through the whole thing. You have to use a wrench. Well done. Oh, I just discovered I, I took the block of bell housing bolt out instead of the actual bottom starter bolt. They're side by side and it's kind of dark, and that's what I do. Every time, you know, it's easy with the wrench, and then you put your fingers on it and it tightens right up again. Sure, people watching can relate. That's still too tight. But it feels like nothing with the wrench on it. Maybe it's the, uh, the starter. Should have a little wiggle to it. That helps. Not like the later transmissions you can just unclip the sh shift levers and cables and lines this one goes right in the tranny i might have to drop the pan to unhook that one because it comes up above the tranny and then goes into the firewall and under the dash to the shifter so i have to take one end out anyway So it's a new day. Uh, we're still in the middle of filming episode four. And of course it's snowing now. And unfortunately the charger's gotta sit outside. Well, at least for the rest of the day anyway. So sad. So just a little recap. Uh, we did a few things off camera last night. Um, the tranny lines, of course, like the, the cooler lines, like they like to do is they just twist off in the nut because they're so seized and rusted. So I just cut them. We're going to make new ones. So I wrapped them out. I had to get them out of the way. 
so I could get the starter out so that we get that other motor mount out. And then right away, I'm going to grab this other shifter cable and the uh, reverse light switch, disconnect them. And then um, we should be close to pulling it. Okay, we'll get this shifter cable out. And I'm thinking, I thought it snapped off for a second there. It, it sunk right into the socket. I went, oh no, it's not working. The saga continues. Yeah, the saga continues. So that, I think, I think I might have to uh, drop the pan to get a little clip out. Uh, if I recall doing it on uh, Mad Max there behind you. Uh, but I'll get this uh, backup light wire off. And then if we have to drop the pan, at least it's it's empty of fluid. So I'll just make a little mess instead of a huge mess. Because I have this, this way of taking showers in every fluid that uh, I drain. If you've seen the uh, antifreeze episode. My friends all like that, by the way. They thought it was funny. I'll get them back. Ken call it the Irish spring shower yeah Ken Porter <laughs> the Irish spring shower and then the rusty bolts he called the brown Loctite <laughs> that's probably the best Loctite there ever is okay that one's like I said yesterday it's easy on the wrench but you go to do it with your finger and it's still too tight but you're toughens your hands up trying to loosen bolts with your fingers like the tight bolts it's like yeah i'll put the nut back on there just so i don't lose it because that's what'll happen and down this path a thousand times and then i'll see if this is going to come on i can't remember how we did it on the other one there actually in the top of here see, there we go, but I, I think the cable might be captured in there. Um, yeah, it is. So I, I don't remember how I did that if I had to drop the pan or not, but I think I'll just drop the pan now and uh, be done with it. Okay. This is the Mad Max that Dean was referring to earlier, which will be on future episodes as it needs some attention as well. <clears throat> What's wrong with this car, Dean? Uh, one of the roller lifters went bad. It was just a used set, so they had some miles on them. It turned sideways in its bore on the cam and it destroyed the cam. And then, so I was just gonna replace the roller lifters and when I had it apart to check everything out, I pulled the cam out and I could see that the uh, the cam bearings in the block were all chunking out. Um, I mean, it was a used engine I put in there, so these things happen. Anyway, uh, so it's all got to come out. And with that being said, I bought a short block, a fresh rebuilt short block off my buddy Paul. And... Um, I think, and it's balanced 30 over, forged pistons, flat tops, 10 to one. Similar to what was in there already. So I'm just gonna switch the whole short block and put my a new cam, new roller lifters, and then uh, my heads. And it's got the cross ram max wedge induction. And uh, I'll put all that in there and uh, hopefully for this summer as well. On a future episode. On a future episode. This is our shop fuzzy Maggie and she's the the dog that you see at the end of every episode. Okay, we'll uh, drop this pan again and just have a look. No huge mess. Whoa. Oh, maybe there is, but luckily I hit the pan. <laughs> well done. That's not normal. Well, of course the bolt's gotta go in there. So, we'll have a look with the light here. You see, 
comes in and there's a little clip. Or maybe it's just spring-loaded. Anyway, I'll pop that off and then put the pan back on. Okay, so I dropped the pan and uh, as I thought, there's a little uh, spring clip here and it engages this here to hold it on. So it sits just like that. So you gotta drop the pan to pull that out. And then uh, this here slides out. And we got the reverse light wire off. And then I got a bit of linkage up here for uh, kick down. I just got to, uh, here, I'll get a light on there so you can see. Yeah, uh, kick down. So I've just got to take that apart. And then I've got the one motor mount on the, this side here. And I think that's it. It's ready to come out. So I'll just button this here uh, pan back on just to keep things clean. So I put the pan back on. I disconnected the linkage for the kick down. And of course, this is out. So now it is on to the last motor mount bolt. And I think with this bolt, we should be ready to jack the engine up. Everything should be good. I just put the, I just put the wrench on this uh, stud. There's a stud coming out of the little bracket here. You can see, maybe Sean will put the camera on there. Um, you can see right in there, that's a, uh, a nut supposed to be welded onto the bracket. Well, you can see that weld is broken loose. So I have a feeling this should be lots of fun to get out. If they come, if the threads come easy, no problem. But otherwise I'll have to put a vice grip on it to hold it. And that can entail yeah, misery. So as luck would have it, you see, I got the vice grip on the nut there and the bolt is just finger tight. You can see the stud turning. I mean, how easy is that? Obviously, when they went to tighten it, that this this nut on the back is supposed to be welded, broke loose, and they just said the heck with it. So that's good. So why is it the women in our lives insist on keeping us organized? I was just about to lower the hoist, and she says, "Why don't you take the tools off the ramps before you put it down?" I could never think of that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this under here underneath the transmission. I'm gonna loosen this strap on the tranny that's holding the tail end up just to give us, have it sag down a bit. So we got more of an angle to run the engine and trans out as a combo. So I'm just gonna put this here, jack it up as far as it'll go. So the thing doesn't totally fall out. And I'm just gonna loosen this strap and uh, try not to break my hand. And then, um, yeah, and then I think we'll lower the hoist down and hook up the, the engine crane. And we'll have to leave the hoist a little bit off the ground just to get the engine crane feet in here. So that might be interesting. We'll see how that works. I've never taken an engine out on with, a, you know, with a hoist like this, you know, in the way. And then, um, yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, it's just not going to work. We just roll it outside and I got a bobcat with forks and we'll just use the chain and stuff. But it'd be nicer to do it this way. And okay, that's all that Jack's going to give me. So I'm going to loosen the strap and that's probably going to fall pretty good. We'll see. Just loosen it slowly. Will it just go slow? You can't loosen it. It's either hooked or it's not oh, like right. that. Anyway. It's not giving us too much uh, play, but that's okay. And then maybe I'll slide the strap back past the mount, just more in the tail shaft area. That way there's less, less of the tranny that's got to slide over it. And I'll just, uh, I'll leave this loose. Uh, well, I mean, I'll ratchet it, but I won't ratchet it tight. So we leave that as a backup for it to not completely fall out. And, uh, yeah, I didn't even need this jack in the end, but it's better than... Better safe than sorry. Yeah, it's better than finding out the hard way. They say an education costs money. I'm just not ready to pay for it yet. <laughs> okay, so now we'll, uh, we'll lower this down.
And look at the other end. So I just lowered the car down. And I'm just going to check to make sure everything's clear as for uh, removal. And there's one thing left here is this power steering hose that goes to the cooler and back. And look at it, they got obviously the wrong size hose. They got three clamps on there. And then the hose is totally kinked, like closed right off. I gotta say, that's some special hokiness. So up top, there's a couple AC lines I'm gonna remove because they're gonna be in the way of getting the engine out. And then this right here might be an issue because the engine's gotta come up to get off the stud for the motor mount. And this is so tight, I can't even lift it off. So what I might try and do is uh, see if I can remove the valve cover and that'll give us a lot more clearance here to, uh, to get this puppy out. So looking this over, uh, I am concerned about this, and of course I don't want to damage that, that's just fiberglass. This won't slide off. I unbolted the valve cover thinking I might be able to slide it out, but it just there's just no room there. So what I'm gonna do is just unbolt this cover off the top, pop this off, pop this off. Anyway, there's some neat pliers. If you can focus on there, they got a, a neat way of doing things. Anyway, it's for these kind of clamps here, you know, to just squeeze them and get a grip. Um, I mean, you can use vice grips and uh, regular pliers, but it, it is a lot harder because it, it wants to keep going sideways when you compress the spring. Okay, so time to cut some more fingers. We'll uh, slice that and... Oh. <laughs> Need a drain for that. So a little bit of a mess, but we managed to ca catch the rest of it. It was only probably half a liter, a liter, something like that. Not very much. Anyway, we'll get this one off. And these things get so stuck in there. A little more slack. That's, two. that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> what it is well i dropped the second razor blade off the fender under the car so i'm just gonna maybe do it the proper way and just get a knife and always keep your fingers out of harm's way when you're using these things it would be uh nothing to cut yourself right down to the bone that would happen in seconds Okay, so get these off, and then I'm gonna dig underneath for a couple more screws. I'm sure holding this is just a cover, but that's gonna give us some uh, some room to lift the engine. Then I oh, and then we get the AC lines, and then I think we're good to go. Okay, cover's all loose. Now we'll see what uh, kind of wildlife is in here. Thing jumps out of there. Uh -huh. I am so gone. <laughs> Okay, so this just a little clip holding this in here, this rod. Okay, that's done, and this is probably just be tip tip it up. Oh, I see this. The heater core is actually right inside the cover. I thought that was just the spouts coming through, but obviously it's attached in there. Right here. Oh wow. So we'll uh We'll pressurize that and look for leaks and uh, examine this. I'm not sure if heater cores for this model car is readily available or not. They are for most cars, but again, I'm not so familiar with this early stuff, so we'll see what comes up. But actually, there's no no mouse debris at all in there, so that's kind of surprising. Yes, but it's uh, infested with rats. I yeah, think. no, it's probably mice. It's hey, all the small poop or squirrels and stuff. And then, but anyway, we got all our clearance now. And it was just a few bolts, so it was pretty easy. So we got this off, this out of the way. This will come off. I'm just kind of curious to see what uh, what it looks like inside. If we've had regular oil changes or if it's all rust or what it is. 
and that looks uh, not bad. It's fairly rusty right up here on these rock arms. You get flakes of rust and stuff in there. So that's definitely not good. Um, doesn't look like there's much, if any, sludge buildup on these. They're pretty clean. So I think this is just from sitting. I mean, either way, the head's got to come off because we got to look and see what's inside. Um, that being said, uh, we're going to try and salvage this engine. But uh, I did have a friend of mine, Mike, who uh, who just told me about a possible parts car. Now, it, he thinks it's a 64. He, he rec he's seen it a while ago. And he doesn't know the address. He uh, is going to go from memory and, and show me where it is. Uh, but he thinks it's a 64 New Yorker. He thinks it's a two-door. And uh, and it's got a running 413. So it's a running driving car. So we're going to go look at that. And it's pretty cheap, too. Uh, he says it's in really good shape. So uh, I would not want to part it out if it's a restorable car. Because that, that just pains me. I can't, I can't do that. I can't kill a car. So, you know, if it's smashed or rusted beyond repair, uh, not a problem. It's, it's parts is parts. But if it's a, a desirable car or a restorable car that somebody can enjoy, then I, I, won't, I won't part it out because uh, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So I'm, on one hand, I'm hoping it's really rough because we could use the parts because I could just swap in a running 413, no problem. Uh, and automatic too, for that matter. Uh, and then it's got a really nice interior, although it is a, a two-door. So I don't think any of the seats are going to transfer over because two-door and four-door seats are different because they don't, you know tilt forward and stuff like that but um unless they're buckets i guess buckets would work on the front but anyway um this next week uh we're probably going to go and find that and see what's up with that okay all that's left is to uh remove uh these here lines because the engine's going to come up and they're going to be in the way so we'll just remove them and then bend them out of the way and then we're uh, good to go so I bought this in the past uh, for one of my big work trucks because it was just so high to get up under the hood. But anyway, it's come in handy here. I don't know if anybody's you know used these or seen these, but it's it's kind of neat. It just clips over the tire and then presses with the legs on the bottom. And then of course you can adjust this for height, but it's just handy for uh, for getting up. And then it even holds uh, people my size. Plus size. Um, so now we're just going to hook up the chain here. Of course, all this AC stuff's in the way. Because <clears throat> I like to hook one up in the front, one in the back. Mm. This might be a little different than normal, but anyway, we'll try this. I got some uh, bolts, and we'll just stick it in. Stick it in the intake bolt, cinch it down. This should go in the right way. Hmm. Not sure how much. Uh, I'm gonna probably take this washer off. So, I think the head's big enough that it's not gonna fall through the link. So, I can get this washer out. And then uh, get more more room for the bolt to go down and have more engage it, the engagement with the threads. Normally used, but of course can't find that because, you know, I need it. So we'll just make this work, and it will. I'll put a short lead on it, so we got... Um, Lots of vertical room with the, the hoist because the car is going to be up a little bit off the floor already because we got to get the legs of the hoist underneath the car. And so we got to lift the hoist to, to clear that. So we're going to lose a little bit of vertical room. So if I make this change shorter, that'll compensate a little bit. So we'll try that. Okay, all hooked up. Um, we'll see if we're going to be able to get this high enough. I'm not sure. Uh, we can always extend the boom or that'll be a, a lot of weight on there, but we'll see how this is going to play out. It's not normally where I hook my chains. I usually put one in the front here, one in the back. 
Uh, but all this AC stuff's in a way, worst case scenario, we'll just take all that off. Take lots of pictures because there's a million brackets in here. And then, uh, you know, we can do it the other way that I want. But if we can't get the height we need to clear the car to get it out, because like I said, we had to raise the hoist about six inches up to clear the, the legs of the, the crane. Um, if that doesn't work, if we can't do that, then what we'll do is just roll the car outside um, and use the forks on the Bobcat and we'll lift the engine out that way. Obviously being very careful, but uh, we don't want to mangle it any more than it's already mangled. But anyway, we'll see if this is gonna, gonna do anything. This close all the way. Yeah. Yeah, we should start lifting at any time here. It's starting to move. But the ass end is going up, so yeah. how is that gonna work? We shall see, because uh ideally you want it on an angle like a uh, 45 or 40 degrees so that tranny will clear the the uh, bellows or the farewell and stuff. Yeah, not ideal. Maybe I will see, cause it's just, it's coming up too level. And of course we want it this way to feed through the hole. So I'm gonna lower it down. I'm gonna readjust my chains or I've got actually uh, a device too for changing angles and stuff on there. Um, I think we'll just let this down and we'll just redo the chain so we got more tilt on the front. Okay, so we found some longer bolts. We're gonna go through this uh, AC bracket right into the intake uh, hole. We'll see if that's gonna work. Crank that down. It's down pretty good. Okay, and then we'll do the same over here. I always like to start the threads manually just so you can feel for any cross threading action. So if you just hammer the gun on there, then you can screw things up. There we go. There's lots of thread engagement there. Shouldn't pull out. The washer there just for added bonus. Now, we'll see if that's gonna lift the angle we want. Get this puppy out of there. Hopefully we got enough room with clearance. You know, we still got a bit of exhaust pipe on there, but for the most part, I think it's just straight down and back. So I think I can hear it coming off the, the motor mounts coming off the studs. At least that's what I think I hear. Um. Ah, uh, can't really see. This is binding up there, so it's not, it's not loose. It's not hitting the firewall with the bells in that I can see. I think it might be hung up in the studs. I'll just grab a uh, breaker bar or a pry bar. Well, after lots of messing around, we'll say, um, taking this other motor mount off and just various little issues. Uh, we're at the point where it's coming out. There's nothing really holding it now. Uh, the only issue would be is if this will go high enough. And I have a feeling it won't. Um, we might have to extend this out to here. Give us a little more leverage. But um, I'll see. I'll, I'll jack it up now and we'll just see how high it's going to go. But I just got this feeling that it's... 
I mean, it wouldn't be, it'd probably be better if we were on the waist and we had the extra six, seven inches on the floor clearance. Hold, hold it. Huh? Um, that little. Do you see thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I hold it while you're doing it? Or? Um, you might have to uh, shut the camera off. Okay, this is where we're at. Uh, the tra transmission tail shaft is dragging on the um, transmission tunnel. So we've got room here to come forward with the oil pan on the rad support, but it's hanging up there on that seam with, uh, with the rear yoke. So Shauna's gonna push down with her feet and uh and i'll try and bring it forward anyway i gotta put the camera down so give it a shot okay so we're still struggling here with oil pan clearance versus clearing the uh transmission tunnel now like i said because we're on a hoist you got to get it up off the ground so we're going to lose all that clearance so i just thought of something what I'll do, hello fuzzy, is I'm going to let air out of the tires. That should grab us about three or four inches. And maybe that is the clearance we need. Okay, tires are flat. And I think that's going to do the trick because this was touching the rat support a minute ago. So now I'm going to lower that down and I think we can get that tail shaft out and then we're home free. And then the uh, the greasy beast is out. Say hi, Shauna. Hi, Shauna. <laughs> so the hoist is up all the way. Uh, so what we're gonna do is use the uh, bobcat back there, my son Tyler, and uh, pull the car back with the bobcat and try and get clearance here so we can let this down. So we'll see how this is going to work. Okay. Well, the heart is out. It's a bit of messing around. Turns out my hoist is, my engine hoist is a little bent. Uh, and I wanted to go sideways and fall over. So it was just lots of fiddling around. But anyway, out it comes. So that's it for this episode. On the next episode.